My guest today made cricketing history when he first played for India. At 17 years and 153 days, he became the youngest ever test wicket keeper. How did he do it? And more importantly, how does he look back on his incredible achievement? Well, here to tell us is Parthiv Patel. Welcome to the program, Parthiv. Thank you. Let's start with the day you made history, the 8th of August 2002, when John Wright came to you 15 minutes before the Trent Bridge test and said that you were going to keep wickets for India. Were you excited, nervous or stunned? I was actually stunned. There was no thought in my mind. And it was very, like, uh, it's very difficult to get set before 15 minutes of a test match, especially when you're making your debut. Generally, we, we get to know a day before or something, but suddenly that Ajay Ratra, he got injured, so I, I had to play in place of him. So I was like a bit excited and there was no thought in my mind then. But at the time, were you aware that at 17 years and 153 days, you were about to become the youngest ever test wicket keeper? I, I, ne I actually never thought about that I'm only 17 years because had that thought in my mind, I would have, I wouldn't have been played that, that much of cricket means. I never thought that I'm only 17 year old. I actually behaved like a man. <laughs> <laughs> now, at the end of the first innings, you'd played eight balls and got out for duck. Nasir Hussain said that I really felt for the young kid who they say is 17 and looks 12. Yeah. Were you angry with him? I was not angry because it was just an, just an inning. You you cannot just predict any player by inning or something. But I was not angry with him. I was I wanted to show him that, and actually I wanted to show the team that I am capable of playing at international cricket. So in a sense, he really keyed you up, didn't he? Yeah. And in fact, you got yours back, didn't you? Because in the very next innings, you caught him. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was an easy catch. I mean, probably I never expected that my first catch to be very easy then. But he changed his tune after that, because when he was asked at the press conference, do you still feel for the kid? He said, certainly not. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> that second inning, I actually saw some great batting by you. You batted for, what was it, 25 overs? 25 overs, yes. Then we had to save the test match, and if if we, we would have been saving the test match, then I, mean, we, I think we have another chance of winning the series then. But if we would have lost that test match by 2-0 or something, then we didn't have any chance of winning the test series. So that was a lot of pressure on me to just save the test match. We just had to play around with uh, uh, Ajit, Ajit and Zach. So I mean, it, was, it was quite difficult for me to handle that pressure, but somehow I did manage it. That might have been a real test of character for you, wasn't it? Handling the pressure your first time around. Actually, there was, uh, I, I never thought of playing that 25 hours. I was just thinking of every ball so that my task become that much, that much easier. So I made my goals much more shorter than that. The funny thing is that it became for you a memorable innings. And yet the whole of Trent Bridge, as you said, happened by accident. Yeah. Are you surprised? with the ease with which you cemented your place in the team? I don't think so that I've, I've cemented my place with that. That It was not that easy. I mean, I had to face a lot of, lot of things. I, mean, I never thought that definitely it, it won't get, I won't get my place so easily. It was an accident, but, so that I, but I had to perform there to, play, to cement my place there. So I did well there. And looking back, would you say that that second innings when you batted for 25 overs, scoring 19 runs and saving the match for India was actually a sort of turning point in your confidence? I think it was. I mean, it gave me that uh, self-belief that I can play at the international level. I always had a belief, but actually I did it on the ground, so that made me a lot of difference in my cricketing career. Then. So was that the point at which Parthiv moved from being a teenager to an adult, from a boy to a man? Yeah, probably you can say that. You know, today they say that you're your best keeping against fast bowlers. Do you accept that? I actually not because see, people tend to change the uh, the statements like I, mean, I don't know, but the uh, I know I, I'm I'm a better keeper than what I've been doing these days in the international cricket. I'm a bit disappointed about what I've done in Australia, but I don't accept that I'm a better keeper behind us some when the pace was up. Going back to the Hamilton test of December 2002, there was a fantastic catch. Was it Nathan Astley's wicket that you took yeah. off the heels bowling? Yeah. Talk us through what happened that day. <coughs> when 
we are, they, they were chasing only 168, so we needed a, uh, our best shot to win that test series. And so I was, I was trying to put my 100%. The main thing was I, I put my effort there to take that catch. And, and the most important thing was I put my effort to take that and it came. But it was a particularly difficult catch because it was on your blind side mm. and with your wrong hand as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, like in the cricket, if you put an effort to do something, you 99% you get, you definitely get success. Yeah. Really? You mean where there's a will, there's always a way? Yeah. So when you really try hard, you can almost yeah. do the impossible. Because yeah, sure. yeah. whilst they praise you when you're wicket keeping against fast bowlers, you must be aware that people also say that Parthiv is never totally comfortable handling spin bowlers. I mean, uh, when, I, when I played three test matches against West Indies here in India, I mean, they were quite different. They said that uh, uh, I'm much more comfortable keeping against two spinners. So I really don't, I don't agree with that thing. But uh, see, when 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 some ex cricketers or something, the experienced players say something, you you can always give a thought at it. But when some of the uh, some of the press reporters or something, whoever writes the, I mean, they don't have any idea. I mean, uh, I would love to see them playing them. Because you never know them because they haven't they have, some of them have never played a cricket and they are making some that stupid comments. That so you're know. saying press reporters talk about things they can't do yeah. and criticize um, things they could never achieve. Exactly. So you ignore press comments? I, I, I don't read that newspapers much. Never? Not much. No. Because you must have known that one of the things that you got criticized for a lot mm. in Australia was when you failed to stump punting off, was it Karthik yeah, in the yeah. Sydney test? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I was not keeping to the my standards there in Australia. Somehow I, I didn't do well. So I was a bit disappointed with my performance. But that was a crucial stumping which I missed. But that's always a part of the game. But the important thing about that tour was I was putting my effort. So I'm not that disappointed. But see, when if, if I had some Ricky Ponting, the story might have been some different. So it's a, just a matter of luck. If you'd done it, they'd have written the opposite. But because you didn't, they yeah. criticized you. Exactly. Looking back, was it bad luck that came in the way? Or were you out of form? Or was it just pressure in Australia? I would say it was not the pressure. I mean, I did, I did handle pressure very well wherever I played. But um, somehow, it always happens. It, uh, it, uh, it comes in every cricketer's life that there will always be a bad patch and good patch. So if if uh, it's a matter of confidence, if I'll do well in the next series, and which I'm very confident of, then the, all the statements will change. Tell me something. Is it difficult to handle pressure? Do you enjoy it? Does it bring out the best in you? I mean, you, you have to enjoy it. Otherwise, the more you take a pressure, then you won't be able to give your best shot. So I I rather enjoy the pressure. And you perform best under pressure. Yeah. In a sense, you like a challenge. Yeah, exactly. Now, something else happened on the last day of the Sydney test. I gather mm. you had a very interesting exchange of words with Steve Waugh. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, the test match was almost finished. So we were just trying to pull Steve Waugh's leg. And he, I just told him, that's only your last test match now. Come on, show us your favorite, favorite that's lock sweep. And he was like, he was saying that, just respect me. When when I made my test demo, you were in your nephew. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to that? I didn't, I didn't know any word to say that. <laughs> you know, the amazing thing is, so many of your achievements have happened when you were actually incredibly young. I gather you made your debut for Gujarat when you were just 11 years old. Yeah, that was under 14 tournament, and I was the youngest player in the side. So, and I still remember the scores which I scored. Mm. That was a challenge because. I didn't get selected for under 16 that year, so I had to. I, that was in the back of my mind that I had to show them that I, I am a capable of playing under 16, though I have only 11. So I, I scored some 92s against Bombay. Then. Of just 111 balls. Yeah. That was a high point, was it? You yeah. were again proving to them yeah. that I am capable of better. Yeah. And in fact, not much later, you were selected for the under 16. And in a West Zone match, yeah. although you were actually only 15 years old, yeah. you scored three centuries. Yeah, I mean, that was an incredible year for me because I played under-19 cricket and I scored a lot of runs there also. 
and in under 16s i remember i still remember a game against maharashtra in kolapu i scored 100 in first inning and then we were followed on and we had to bat for a full day and i scored a 201 not out so then it is probably the best match so far what really I, the yeah. best match in your whole life yeah but the amazing thing is not much later and you were still only just about 17 you captained the india under 19 team to the new zealand world cup yeah before before that year we had a under 17 asia cup and i captained the 17 asia the cup one to dhaka with the one to dhaka where we got champion i think that was a turning point for me because then i got selected for the nca and then for australian academy so you know means under 19 world cup was a different was a different thing it means it was a whole like a turning point for all of us it means very important we were the champion last time so there was a lot of pressure on us and i think i would like to thank all the players now that they helped me a lot there and uh, definitely our coach and the manager but the amazing thing is that you know at every point you've always been younger than the rest of the team yeah. do you like being the baby of the team or do you I get fed up of it now now i'm getting fed up with because i'm have turned 19 now so it's nothing but it always it helps it helps when you're playing the seniors and i mean they all the seniors are helping me a lot so i mean when you are playing at the international level you need to, i mean it's very important that your colleagues help you and that's been a great to me and mentally you want to stop being thought of as a young kid any longer yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay Parthiv, let's take a break i want to come back in part two and not talk about Parthiv the cricketer i want to talk about the other side of Parthiv mm. that the world very rarely gets to see we'll be back in a moment's time don't go away Welcome back. My guest is the incredible Parthiv Patel. Parthiv, I gather you were born in Kalupur and Ahmedabad, and they say it's a pretty rough sort of place. Yeah, I mean, it's been quite communic uh, community, like a very disturbed place. I mean, we always get that communal, uh, communal riots there. So, but uh, it's very difficult to leave there, it means, when those communal riots happen. And uh, whenever it happens, I, I I don't stay at the home, I just go to my uncle's place before because it gets disturbed my studies and all. But I gather there have also been times when they've stoned your home. Yeah, there's a lot of times because there's only one common wall between us. So I've seen everything, I've seen throwing stones, I've throwing, seen throwing bombs and everything. So that was a difficult part of my life. In fact, your parents say the day you were born, there was curfew there. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard so many times from so many people, also from my parents and that so many, so many friends of mine, they were saying that, but I know there was a coffee then. And they had to bring you back in a police jeep? Yeah, they said that. <laughs> now, your uncle Jagat says that even as a child, you used to dream cricket. Apparently, you used to wake up at the age of four in the middle of the night shouting, throw the ball. I mean, I have been playing cricket with the... I, I was playing cricket with that uh, plastic ball or a rubber ball when I was just four or five or whatever. I mean, whenever I had a habit of talking in the night when I was a kid. I mean, uh, I have so many shout. I have so many times I have shouted that gave me the ball and stuff. I mean, that's what my my grandmother and everybody has seen me whenever I wake up next day. Your uncle Jagat dedicated his life to making sure you became a test cricketer. Is it true that, in fact, he promised not to get married just to give you his undivided attention? I mean, he 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 has done a lot for me. I mean, I mean, I don't think so. No, no uncle would have done anything for such for his nephew. I mean, I'm really really thankful to him because he whenever when I, my dad used to go to the office and my mom also my mom also working. So, and even even my uncle was working, but still then. He used to drop me to the ground and take me from the ground and whatever, whenever. He used to come to see all matches and he used to advise me in every way, not in the cricket, I mean, how, how to talk with whatever, whomever you meet. And all. So he's been like a father and a friend? Yeah, he's been like, he's, he's been a big, big part of my life. One of the closest people in your life? Yeah. Actually. The sad part is he's also responsible for the fact, isn't he, that you lost half your little finger on your left hand? Yeah, I mean... I was a very mischievous kid. I used to I used to do a lot of a lot of stuff. I mean I used to 
have done a lot of things. I mean, falling down from the fourth floor and lost the finger. But on this occasion, when you lost the finger, yeah. you'd been naughty and he locked you in the bathroom. Yeah, uh, I just, uh, I bite my sister's nose. So <laughs> when my uncle, my uncle's friends and everybody were watching a movie, that I think that Sangam movie was going on then. So they were watching it quite, I mean, and I was, I was quite naughty. And so he said, I'll, I'll lock you in the bathroom. So uh, in doing that, my finger came in the door. And in fact, you were crying away. And yeah. they didn't realize that you were in agony. Yeah, I mean, they they thought that I'm crying because they've locked me in the bathroom, but but they didn't know that my finger is in the bathroom. Now, do you think, in a sense, in fact, your uncle's attachment to you and his devotion to your cricket is a result of the fact that perhaps he feels terrible about this accident? I don't know. I don't think so. That can be the reason because he never he never. I mean, after that incident, we, we, have, we have never talked about that thing that because of him or whatever, my finger got this thing. But I don't think so that can be the reason. Until the age of 10, they say that in fact you weren't a wicket keeper, you were more of a batsman. How did the switch to wicket keeping happen? I don't know. I, I, as far as I am remember, I, I always wanted to be a wicket keeper because whenever I played in the gully also, I used to be the wicket keeper only. So. Um, but I always enjoyed wicket keeping more. That was what you wanted to do? Yeah. So these stories that one reads, that you first kept wickets with your bare hands and you ended up with blisters and only wore gloves because you wanted not to get hurt again, those are just stories the press makes up. Yeah, always. <laughs> but there's another story that your coach, your Gendra Pani says. Yeah. He says as a kid when Parthiv used to go to camp, he used to spend a lot of his time crying. When I was only nine when when I first camped in Baroda and Gandhinagar. It was means I felt I felt a lot of homesick there. So my uncle and my dad used to come every day. That Gandhinagar was only one one hour drive from Ahmedabad. So they used to come and bring the food for me. And also in Baroda, they they had to call my parents once. That's right, because you were crying and crying and crying. <laughs> yeah. And apparently there was another occasion when you went with lots of food that your mother and father had given you yeah. and all the boys at the camp ate it up instead. Yeah, I mean, it was under 16 camp but I was only 10 and uh, I, I have never been to such camps because before so I never knew that we, we have to lock this uh, food and also by the time I came back from the practice you know, my bag was empty. So. <laughs> now of course since then you have blossomed as a cricketer. But the one thing in a sense that suffered is your studies. Twice yeah. you had to postpone your 12th board exam yeah. and it looks as if you're going to have to miss them this year again. Yeah, it's very, it's very difficult though, though I'm playing at an international level but it's very important for me to complete my studies because that makes me, that makes, a, a, I think studies makes you perfect so I need to, I need to complete my study and I've been requesting that government for doing that special exam. So what are they saying? I don't know, they are not doing it. Yes. They are not giving you the special permission? Yeah. So you want to make a special plea to them today, please let me do it. Yeah. <laughs> the amazing thing is, as a result, on the one hand, you are a test cricketer, an international cricketer, mm. and on the other, you are still at school. Does that become a difficult combination? It does become a difficult combination, but see, when, when you are a test cricketer, I, my, my whole life depends on cricket. But that doesn't mean that I stop my studies. You are determined to finish your studies, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. What about your parents? How do they treat you? Because, you know, you're an earning member of the family, but you're still a teenager. You're an adult because you're recognized as an adult, and yet you're still a kid. So yeah. which they treat you as, an adult or a kid? I mean, they just, they just treat me like what, uh, what a parent treat their 18-year-old, 19-year-old boy. Are they yeah. strict with you? But they don't have to be strict with me because I'm very, means I'm always there with them, always there. Whenever I get a chance, I'm always there with them. You mean you're no longer naughty as you used to be when you no, were young? No, no longer. No. You become very disciplined and straight. Yeah. The other thing is that last year, just after you turned 18, you had this new Maruti Zen. Yeah. And you had a car crash with it. Yeah. I gather your friends say the most difficult thing was telling his parents. Yeah. I mean, I've crashed my cars so uh, quite a few times, but. You like I was, crashing your car? <laughs> no, I actually don't. But uh, I was not a good driver then, so I used to tell my friends that uh, when, whenever I'm rever reversing that car, I'll just stop when the noise comes. <laughs> <laughs> so 
that's what happened and uh, I didn't want to tell my parents but they they did come to know. So each time you have a car crash you say, oh, oh, I stopped too late. Yeah. <laughs> you also say sometimes of yourself, you say, I'm short tempered and I get easily irritated. I mean, yeah, when I, whenever I'm off the field, I don't, uh, I'm a bit moody, so I, I don't want, whenever, I, if I'm not in the mood of talking with somebody and they, if he uh, keeps asking me questions, I usually get irritated. But I can get irritated with so many small things, like if something's lost and I get irritated very easily. And that has been what you've been like always, or is that just something that's happened recently? No, I've always been like that. The other thing, of course, is that today when you get short-tempered and irritated, the whole world is there watching, the press is there looking. So have you learned to curb your irritation and control your temper? Yeah, I've been, but I don't get irritated and get angry in the public area because it's very difficult, it's very difficult for them to take and it, it, it can spoil my image. So irritation is only for the family and your <laughs> friends. <laughs> but now I've been, I mean, uh, whenever I get irritated, I don't talk and I just, Keep calm. Yeah. Your sister says that he's also very shy and he runs away even when my friends come. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, if I don't know somebody, like whether it's a girl or a boy, if I don't know, I usually don't talk unless then I need to know them first, then, then, only, I can, then only I can talk. So, do you make friends slowly and cautiously? Yeah, I do make slowly and cautiously. How many people know the real past here? No, I, I have, I have, um, a few friends in uh, in my home. Like I I I, I don't rem I don't remember. I don't have any. I'm not in touch with any of my school friends because they are quite there in the studies. Most of the friends which I've been which I've been playing with them since like I'm 14, and not many more, probably 10 or 15. Today, of course, you're famous. You're probably well on the way to becoming rich. Has cricket changed you? Has fame changed you? I, uh, I don't think so. Fame has changed me. I've always been the same, what I've been. But, but sometimes you have to be a bit cautious, cautious about what you are doing. So, uh, I mean, uh, you're more careful. Yeah, I'm more careful. And you're more conscious of the fact that there are people always looking at you. Yeah. And that everything you do makes news. So that's in a way cramped your style. But even even when I was even when I was not. Playing for India has always been careful about because you never know who is watching you. Parthiv, a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you, Ryan.